All right, we're going live. And it says we're live. So well, let's see how that goes. So hello, everybody. Yeah. Glad to see a few saying hi. Let's see. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this topic, too. I hope I can make it as... As easy and neat and clean as I think it is. Let us know if you can see the color bars and the please stand by. That'd be great. Make sure that we have sound going out. I think we do. But no one said anything so far. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Oh, says good. Again. Richard says he can see in here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Lonnie Kern says hi from Southern Arizona. Yeah, we depend on you guys, you know. Yeah. We have sound, and please stand by. Well, that's good. Hey, Warren. Hey, Warren. All right. Well, I think it's about two o'clock. Okay. Not quite. everyone and welcome to episode number 183 of what does this button do it's an educational show about smartphones and technology with us geeks on tour today's beginners lesson is how to relax and keep your photos organized but first chris has a quick tip what do you have there well a couple of weeks ago we had a question on a show about mirror image selfies that sometimes they couldn't read the text that was taken in a selfie and I had never noticed that but since then I've researched it and and figured out so I just want to show you one more slide how it looks in the camera selfie screen is a mirror view I had never actually noticed that You don't before. pay attention to it a lot of times. <laughs> no, you're usually looking at your face. But, but for so I'm going to take a selfie, and you're going to see this Geeks on Tour. And one time it'll be mirror image, and one time it'll be straight. Because there is a setting in my Samsung phone, not all phones. So let me show you first. I'm going to take a selfie, and I'm going to make sure make sure that the, the logo there is nice and... <laughs> Flat and seen. Okay, so two seconds. Okay. And, and I didn't even look that time, but if I had really looked, I would have noticed that the Geeks on Tour was backwards, was mirror image. But if I show it to you on the phone and realize I do not want to show, I want to look at it in Google Photos. Everything I do is in Google Photos, so I don't want to tap the little image from the camera. I want to go out, use Google Photos, and then, and you can see that Geeks on Tour 
is in mirror image. You cannot read it. Okay, so here's the deal. In the camera, there is a setting. You'd find a little gear wheel, and there is a setting that says Picture as previewed. Save selfies as they appear in the preview without flipping them. You don't want that on. And I, the default is that it's not on. So somehow, whoever asked that question a few weeks ago, your default had gotten turned on. So I now turned it off, which means it will flip it. And let's take a selfie again. Now let's make sure that your, your logo is... Okay, <laughs> so I cut off our heads <laughs> on that one. <laughs> All right, and now I will look at that photo using Google Photos. And it's the last picture, and now they are readable. Oh, good. I was so happy. <laughs> so, that's, so that's my tip. There is a setting. Now, I, have, I don't think there is a setting in iPhones. Which makes sense to me. Why would anybody want the mirror image? You know, so if a phone is smart enough to flip it, why not? I agree. <laughs> okay, right. so that's that's my tip. And a very good tip it is. <laughs> well, hi everyone. Uh oh. All right. This is my fault. <laughs> You Where are we now, Chris? <laughs> Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and glad for it. We had, what, somebody from Chicago email us today that they're not degrees. happy up there. It's, and it's cold, really warm in the snowy. northeast. It's crazy, crazy And weather. that's what it looks like here. Actually, today, yeah. the sun's coming out. Yep, things are beautiful. As used, it should be. And and that photo, actually, I, I might bring up. It's a great example of how Snapseed... Does anybody think that photo of the beach is extra special, pretty, with the way it's colors and lighting? It wasn't when I first took it. It was because <laughs> of just tapping a couple taps in Snapseed that it, come, that it gets that beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Very good. All right, I want to remind everybody about our backstage pass. We have a backstage pass after this recording or after this show uh, where we can come in live with with our uh, with our members. Our premium members can come in at the backstage pass and have a little discussion about the things that we've talked about here. And it should be something that uh, all of our members should want to do. You need a camera. Well, you don't need a camera, but we would like you to have a camera and a microphone in order to participate in this. And we use Zoom technology, and we'll show you where that where that backstage pass is. It's after the show. You get the link from an email that we sent out or Chris sent out earlier to our premium members. But if you can't find that, just go to our <laughs> website, geeksontour.com, and go to the member login. All right. Any questions out there yet? I haven't seen any. Have you? A lot of people saying hello. That's always nice to see everybody saying hello. <laughs> All right. And a lot of people there. Charlie, Jack and Karen, Monty. Wow, Michael, thank you so much. Minus 52 degrees. Sorry, Rick. In Dawson City. <laughs> You know, I actually grew up in Anchorage, Alaska, and have been in Dawson City, and my coldest memory was minus 72 degrees in Toke Junction. Toke, huh? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no thanks. That's why I live in Florida now. <laughs> See y'all back here? Thank that's, you, that's Michael. That's what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> Photos organized. I love that picture. Isn't that nice? Yeah, photos are supposed to be fun, not work. So I have my recipe. I'm going to share with you my recipe for how to do that. Okay. 
In case you're coming to this channel and, and don't know us, I, I just need to say a few words so that you can know should you be listening to us or not. <laughs> We, we're not professional photographers. They have their own needs. We are, we are just people who take a lot of pictures of our travel and our everyday memories. And Chris has over 75,000 pictures in her Google Photos, and I have nearly 30,000. I've been the family historian, if you will, and I've been using Google Photo management tools since 2004, all for free, all for every one of my photos i used i started with picasa wrote a book on that have now switched to google photos written a book on that and number one i think what helps us help others is that we go one-on-one -on -one with people around the country helping them with their smartphones and we've been doing it for years so it's not just that we know how to manage our pictures on our phones. We help other people. I'm, I've learned what trips people up and what works really well. And Chris is a platinum level Google product expert in Google Photos. So I think my recipe is really good. I think so too. <laughs> let's, let's see what you think. All right. Have you made a New Year's resolution? To take more pictures, these phones are such good cameras. So we want you to be able to take as many pictures as you want, but keep your process simple, keep your workflow simple, and first and foremost, don't lose your photos. You know, like the Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm. Do no harm. You know, first don't lose your photos. So what we're talking about, my recipe is about how to get started now on a system that will be easy to follow all year and forevermore until things change. That never happens. And it's about taking new pictures. We're not talking about gathering all your old pictures into Google Photos, which you certainly can, but that's another lesson. So I'm saying starting the day, what should be your system of taking photos, keeping them, and organizing them? And you have a recipe. I have a recipe from the kitchen of Mrs. Geek. <laughs> also known as Chris Gould. So just like all recipes, you have ingredients and you have directions. First, you need to understand the goal though. What is, who, who are you gonna feed? The goal is to be able to take as many photos as you want and be confident that you won't lose any. To make your best photos look even better with just a few clicks or taps on the editing tools and then set them apart for sharing if you should want or just for your own viewing. And last, to keep all your photos safe, sorted in multiple ways and searchable throughout your lifetime. So that's our goal. The recipe. I call it my lazy photo organizing recipe. The ingredients are, number one, a Google account because I'm, I'm talking about Google products. I think they are the best for, for the consumer market, for the rest of us to manage our photos. You need a Google account, you better know your username and password. You need a smartphone. That's how you're gonna take most of your pictures anyway. And you need the Google Photos app. Now at that point, I wanna just show you you know, just in case you're new, I know we have a lot of people on here that yeah, even even teach Google Photos themselves, so uh, you know what I'm talking about. But if you're new, I want to make sure you understand what I'm talking about. I have my Samsung Android phone on the left, as you can see with the little Android guy there, and my Apple phone on the right, on the Samsung then. The Google Photos app is this little multicolor pinwheel. This app is called Gallery. It comes with your phone. I don't want you to use that. You cannot get rid of it. So therefore, I think you should just move it out of the way. You grab it and move it over to a last screen. It's the Google Photos app that I want you to use. Same thing on the iPhone. Uh, there is the Google Photos app, the pinwheel looking app. 
the Apple Photos app, the one that comes with Apple, is the same coloring, mm. but it's just a different shape. Once again, once you start using Google Photos, I want you to use Google Photos for everything. Otherwise, you'll get confused. I want to move the Apple Photos app out of the way. I'm just going to put it into this folder up here. So I'm going to long press, and now you have to then tap on Edit Home Screen to make them wiggle. Long, and drag it up, and drop it into that folder. So now... I'm not tempted. So the reason it. for that is just to get it out of your way. Right, right. You can't uninstall it. So I just think you should you should hide it. You should get it out of the <laughs> it way. It shouldn't be in there. Okay. Um, there are occasionally reasons why you still might need to use it, sure. but not generally. And what happens if you open the camera and use this little miniature photo to go to your photos. What app do you think is being opened there? I think it would be the native app, the one right. that came with your phone. This is not Google Photos. So, And same thing over on the Android. If you tap the little miniature of the picture, you're opening the Android gallery rather than your Google Photos. Okay, so back to the recipe. All right. So that's the Google Photos app, and if it's not on your phone, you need to go install it from the App Store or the Play Store. I also think you should get the Snapseed app. Now it's kind of optional, but Snapseed is for really, for fancy editing, and it's free, it's from Google, you get it from the App Store or the Play Store. Number, no, Whoop. number five is an additional cloud account. I recommend OneDrive or Dropbox. Now that's gonna cost you anywhere from two to $10 a month, but that is what, to me, means your photos will absolutely be safe no matter what. Now you might also have a camera. Hopefully it's one of the new cameras with Wi-Fi. That means whenever you take a picture, you can set it up so that that picture is wirelessly transferred to your phone. Then it goes with Google Photos like everything else, so everything can still be automatic. If you use a camera that's not, then you're going to have to copy it to the computer and then up to Google Photos. And a computer. If you don't have one, you don't need to get one for this process. If you do have one, that's good. So those are the ingredients. The steps, the directions. First of all, take photos. <laughs> then let Google Photos auto back them up to the cloud, to the Google account cloud, but you need to verify it. Now, not every time, but occasionally you need to verify it. Step three, let your additional cloud account, OneDrive, for example, auto back up all the photos from your phone. Once again, you need to verify that. I'll demo all this in just a minute. Step four, Edit the photos. You're gonna to wanna to look at them anyway. Just go ahead and tap the edit button and do a couple of things. It's so easy and it improves your photos immensely. Then when you decide which photos are your absolute best, put them into an album, that's step five, and share them as desired or just keep the albums for yourself. And last step is to download your albums to your computer so that you have them offline in case you need. And we will demo all of this. So let's go. First, I need to take a couple of photos. Okay. So I'm going to use my Samsung for this, for taking the photos. And you have that cute little Android <laughs> guy there. I do. So this is, this is my little product expert. Android, and I just think he's so cute, I'm going to take a picture of him. Okay. Now, I want to take a picture of the back. Oh, yeah. He has this little Google product expert cape on. I want one real size. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then I want to take a little video because I always forget to mention that 
videos are part of your photo library. We refer to it as photos, but videos are. So I have this little wind-up android. Oh, you can't see him because he's green. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll be able to see the video. Okay. <coughs> <laughs> he winds down pretty quick. Cheap Google things. But all right, so I have a little five five second video. So I took photos, I took video, and now I want to look at them. All right. And this is the camera that I just took them with. So remember, I do not want to look at them by tapping that button because that takes me to the Samsung Gallery. So I need to go out and open Google Photos. And here first are the selfies that we took. There is the little Android guy. And here is my video. <laughs> okay. I can never resist doing a couple little edits right away. Like here, if this photo is to be of him, I need to crop out everything in the background. Especially the guy with the mustache. Yeah. Here's here's the edit button. Is this little bars and stripes? And there is the crop tool. And just crop in there. Good. That's better. I'll always try and auto Mm, I think I liked it better original. But then maybe a little pop. There's so much you can do just built right into Google Photos. All right, so I've I've done an edit now and and what are these black ones? This these these were obviously mistakes. They're completely black. So I want to delete them. I eat, I can select them all with long press on the first one, drag over, and then tap the one more, and then delete, it will move five. It says move to trash five. Remove from Google account and sync devices. This is why you want to be using Google Photos instead of the Samsung Gallery. I These are garbage. I want them deleted from everywhere. I want them deleted from the phone. I want them deleted from my Google Cloud. So move to trash. And that's what Google Photos does. If I was in the Samsung Gallery, it would delete them from the phone. They would still be in my Google Cloud. Did my new photos get automatically uploaded to Google Photos? That was step, that's step two, right? You take photos. You let Google Photos automatically upload them. It's Google's job, Google Photos' job, to automatically upload them. But it's your job to check that it did happen, that it did get done. Okay? So, on the phone. they are uploading and I can watch them until it says upload complete or backup complete they use the word backup I kind of wish they'd use upload but one item left and backup complete okay now I know that they are safely in Google Photos what's step three of the recipe what, make sure that they got backed up to your second account. And in my case, that is Microsoft OneDrive. 
And there's a setting on OneDrive for camera upload. As long as you have that turned on, then it works just like Google Photos in that it is uploading. I messed up and you lost some sound. I messed up again. I've been so trying. do I need to repeat anything? I think so. Um, yeah. Start that piece over. From, from the backup? From here? Yeah. Huh. I needed to make sure that the photos did get backed up, and that information is now up in your account image. And at first, it said waiting to back up because Wi-Fi was off. I turned Wi-Fi on, and we watched them back up. Then... The next step of the recipe is to watch that your secondary cloud storage is backing up. And in my case, that's Microsoft OneDrive. And in OneDrive, there's a setting to say backup. And under photos, it should be going now. That's the one. There's my little video. And I think these are the other ones. Might have been moved. Or... Oh, those are the black, <laughs> the black ones that I deleted. So it didn't know what to do there. And here, here's the selfie, and the other one, and the little Android guy. And I showed you that video. So I now know that I have two cloud copies of my Google Photos, and if I needed to, I could free up space on the phone by deleting those photos now. So that was steps one, two, and three. And now four is to edit the photos. But first, I want to make a point. So here's the phone that I took the photos with, right? Let's say that I go for a boat ride and, oops, the phone goes <laughs> overboard. Oh, no. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> Have I lost my pictures? No. Not as long as they've been uploaded. Yeah. Right? Now, if I dropped the phone overboard before I had turned that Wi-Fi on, would I have lost those pictures? Yes, because they did not have the chance to get uploaded. So that's the important part. But now I'm going to look at my iPad and open up Google Photos. And it takes, it'll take it a minute to refresh. Sometimes it takes longer than it should. And when that happens, I often force close for, it. Force quit. Yeah, just, just kind of force it to reevaluate. Come on. Okay. It'll get there in a minute. Let me. Let me see if my iPhone is any faster. I think I need a new iPad, sweetie. Yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my iPhone, and the pictures that I took using my Samsung are right here on, on my iPhone. And I can do more, more editing. Like here, this picture of us. I don't like that we have... I think that the green screen is nice for doing video stuff, but... It looks ugly here. I think I'm going to turn this into a black and white. So I can just go over to the Vogue and maybe a little bit of a crop. So making your, making your pictures look better is fun. It's not work. You just have fun with it. Come on, say. 
Yes. There, so now I have a, a black and white photo. And the, while I'm in here, I do just need to show new people a little bit about the fact that Google Photos has my entire lifetime of photos. So just by uploading the photos to my Google Photos account, they are automatically sorted by date. The most recent photo is on top. As you scroll down, you're going back in time. And I can grab this little button here and scroll through the years. I can go all the way back to 1890 and my great great grandfather. We have other shows and videos on changing dates and scanning old photos, etc. I can also look at faces. If I go to albums and people and pets, and I look at Jim, I should notice that the photo that I just took today is in his person album. And if I want to find any photo that I've ever taken of Jim, they're all in here. I did nothing to make that happen. Google Photos sorts automatically by faces. It also sorts by pets. Ha, <laughs> that was fun. Here's our dog, Odie, who's been gone for a while, but we still enjoy looking at pictures of him. It also sorts by places. Hugh Taylor Birch State Park. This is where we go kayak diving down at the ocean. I rarely use these places and things groupings though because the easiest thing is just to search. So I want to search for pictures when we're on kayaks. I can just type kayak and search. I can even type kayak in Venice and sure enough these are pictures of when we went on a little kayak tour in on Venice. On the Grand Canal in Venice. <laughs> Is that cool or what? It was pretty cool. And you can just, you can expand and it's showing me all of the pictures and videos of kayaking in Venice. And so that was step four and five, I think, <laughs> of my recipe was, and it just happens automatically. The people, places, and things and the searching, you ha don't have to do anything to make that happen as long as you made sure that Google Photos uploaded your photos. All right. And we picked a good photo to make it better. Actually, I think I do have time to also show you just a little bit of really making a photo better using using Snapseed. So here's a cool photo of bamboo, but it's just it looks kind of dark. If I open in Snapseed, and use Tools and HDR Scape, it has it has lightened the bamboo, it's made the sky bluer, it's given almost a three-dimensional to it. So, and all of that is just what you can do while you're playing, playing with your photos. And what's the last step? The last step is to make an album. Okay, so the photos that we just took today Let's say that this black and white one of Jim and me, I think is kind of cute. 
Oh, except for that's the one where Geeks on Tour is backwards. Oh, well. If I like that, um, I want to put it in an album. I have a plan. Part of my recipe is to make an album for every month. And I have a specific naming convention to do that. So I will pick that picture. I will tap the three dots or swipe up on the picture. It's the exact same thing anymore. T tapping on the three dots is the same as swiping up on the picture. And I tap add to album. The last album I worked with was December. This is January, 2020. <laughs> so I need to start a new album. I tap plus for new album. And now here's my naming convention. This is how I can find my monthly albums. I always start with the year 2020 and then a dash and the month 01. And then I write out the month just so that it's real visible to me. January and done. So I now have begun my January album and I have one picture in it. And I tap the check mark. Now this picture, which was taken on New Year's Day, I want in that album as well. Swipe up, add to album, and now I just add it to the album I already created, 2020. And it's done. Now if I look at albums and look at January, I have those two pictures in it. And I know that I have one album for every month and I can just search. So I can search for 2019. Now if I'm searching just for 2019, I'm getting calendar. So if I ask for December 2019, when I'm looking at that little icon, Google Photos is going to give me every photo taken in 2019. I'll try it. And look at all those photos that look like duplicates. Why That's is that? It's a drag. Because I do you ever only take one picture? No. Not anymore. <laughs> you take three, four, five to make sure that you get one good one. So if you're asking for all the pictures from December, you're going to get all the pictures. So instead, I can look for 2019. And if I just tap a dash, then it knows that I'm looking for my albums. This little icon means an album. And December isn't showing up. I have to type in DEC. Did I not make one for December? Gee, it kind of looks like it. <laughs> it's kind of like bookkeeping. You know, when I come to the end of the month, I will look and see if I've done all my, my tasks. So there's my album. And you don't see any duplicates because I have specified the exact pictures that I want in there. And that's the way to organize using Google Photos. Yep, that's it. All right. <laughs> that's the last step. Ah, but no, we have two videos. Mm-hmm. Okay. You ready for those? Yep. Let's do this one. Hi, this is Chris Gould with Geeks on Tour, and this quick tutorial video is about downloading photos from Google Photos. Google Photos stores your entire library of photos in the cloud so you can see them with any connected device. But most people also want a copy on their local computer or backup hard drive. But here's the deal. On Google Photos, it stores all of my photos. I have thousands and thousands and so many similar shots. I don't need to have all of those. I don't want to have all of those on my hard drive. I have a plan of making a monthly album of just my best shots. And those albums I do download from the cloud in Google Photos to a backup hard drive on my computer. Let me show you how. First, I want to show you my 
hard drive. It is a external hard drive just plugged into my computer and it has all sorts of stuff on it but here is one folder where I put all my backup of my pictures and I've been doing this for the whole time and if I show you 2018 for example you'll see that I have one file a zip file for each month January February March I also make a zip file for special occasions like a diving trip that we went on. Now let me show you my Google Photos. So here I am in Google Photos and as you know it's just one giant stream throughout the years of my 70, 80,000 pictures. Okay, So I make an album for each month. I click on albums and this is July 2019 so here is my album for June. I open that album and select the three dot menu and download all. That creates a zip file and then it stops and asks me where I want to store it. I want it on my Seagate backup drive in the pictures folder in the folder for 2019 and I like the album name 2019-06 June and it's a zip file I click Save. If yours did not ask you where then I recommend that you change your browser settings. On Chrome it's the three dots in the upper right then Settings then Advanced all the way at the bottom then downloads and notice I have this setting turned on to ask where to save each file before downloading otherwise they all go to the same place your choice but that's my recommendation so now let me look at my hard drive there is June and I've already done January March but it's a zip file. Now I think that's fine. This is my backup. I don't use my pictures on my computer. This is just if something should happen to my Google Photos, I have my best photos for June. If you do want them visible on your hard drive, then you just right click and extract all and it creates a folder with the same name as the zip file and all your photos are inside there. On a Mac, you do the same thing, just double click. Rather than right clicking, you double click and it will unzip. Unzip your file and there are all the photos. Last thing, what if you don't make albums? So you don't have an album for June, but you still want to make a zip file, a backup of all your June photos. You can just search for June 2019, then select, you click on the first one, and then you all the way down to the bottom and you shift click on the last one it tells me 245 pictures are selected those are all the ones from June 2019 and I click on download and it will do the exact same thing I just showed you with with an album so now you can rest easy knowing that all of your photos are in Google Photos but you also have your best for every month locally on your hard drive all right, pretty cool. I have a few questions here. Some people have asked, um, and let's see, Michael, you cannot search faces in an album, right? Search faces in an album, and you know, there's just album faces. Only so, sort photos, just to check. You cannot do that with an album. Not within an album, no. The the sorting the sorting is when I say sort. I'm talking about what Google Photos does automatically. You have no control. All right. It either does it or it doesn't. <laughs> All right. If Google gets the search pictures wrong, can we submit to Google that they got this picture wrong? For example, 
did a search for cars and it gives me a photo of my driveway with no car. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Michael, you're the king of feedback. <laughs> you know, yes, you can send feedback. But when it, if it gets a person wrong, there is a new feature for manual face tagging. And there's an article in my... I wrote an article on it. You did. Okay. Cool. And Sheila asks if there are no, no spaces in an album name. No, you can have spaces you in You can have album. spaces, yeah. I make sure that my official monthly albums just have the four digits for the year, a dash, and the two digits for the month. That, that's my way of identifying them, to have that naming convention. But then I can have a space before the, the word of the month. Okay. We have another video. You ready? Uh, yeah. So this is, this is kind of the icing on the cake. Uh, one is to have a listing of all of your special albums. Hi, this is Chris Gold with Geeks on Tour, and this is a quick little video about making a list of photo albums from Google Photos, making the list in a Microsoft Word document. So I'm here at my Google Photos account. If I click on Albums, I have a ton of albums, uh, several hundred, but I have a system where I make one album for each month, and those are kind of my official albums, if you will. I would like to have a list of them. So what you do is, I'll start with the most recent one, which is March. Click on the album, click the share button up in the upper right hand corner, get link, and copy. Okay, now I go to Word. And I could just paste that link, but no, I want it to say March Photo Album. So I will type March Photo Album. March, I'll say 2017. 2017 March Photo Album. Now I select those words that I want to be clickable, then I click Insert and Hyperlink, and I paste, right click and paste, the link that I just copied from Google Photos. All right, next one, I want 2017 February. I go back to the web, to Google Photos, find my February album, click the share button, get link, copy. Back to Word, select the words that I want to make clickable. I'm already on insert, click hyperlink, right click, paste the link that I want. That's all there is to it. Now this could become a PDF document. You could share it with friends or it could just be something that you keep for yourself. And when I view this document then I can control click to follow the link. I hold down the control key and then when I click that takes me to the web and to my March photo album. And anybody that I gave give that document to would have the same thing. So that's how you create a document with a list of links to your Google Photos albums. And I take it one step further. I get a little bit fancier and show them. If you go to if you go to our blog, our blogger blog. Okay. And you can get there from our main website. So our main website is geeksontour.com. And then there's a menu item called Blogs and News and Jim and Chris's Travel Blog. And there's a menu item here for our photo albums. And every month, and I do have a video on how to do this, it's just a little long, <laughs> it's a little more involved. So if you wanted to see our photos from Cayman Scuba Diving, all right. You just passed it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> 2018 came in scuba dive, and you would just click that link, and now you're looking at our pictures. Now, everything in Google Photos is private to you until you share them. And even then, when you share a link with a friend, only your friend has the link. 
I've posted my links in a public place because that's what I wanted to do. But just just FYI, they are private until you share them. I shared them in a in a public place. Okay, I think I think I'm done. No, I just wanted review. All right. I want to go back to the recipe because we've kind of taken several different tangents here. <laughs> I just want to review the recipe because it really is simple. You can kind of, once you have it set, you can kind of set it and forget it. You take your photos. Where's the recipe? Keep going. That's I mean, I recipe. think you were there. Yeah. This one. That one, yeah. So th this has both the goal, the ingredients, and the directions. But let's just look at the directions. You take the photos. Google Photos uploads them automatically, but you need to check once in a while. OneDrive uploads them automatically, but you need to check once in a while. You edit the photos. That's just fun. You make albums of your best so that you can share as desired and then you download those albums to your computer. Now you can rest easy, go have a drink. It's uh, <laughs> oh, that sounds it's, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's automatic except for your editing and you're putting them in albums. That's the only work you have to do. You do not have to delete all those duplicates. Why? It's free to store them all. And if you do specify your best photos for albums, that's the way to go. All right, cool. Next one. All right, yeah. You might want to skip the... For lots more <laughs> info. <laughs> yeah, you need to go to geeksontour.com weekly class. There's lots more episodes on Google Photos. And this one, geeksontour.com slash Google dash photos. This is where I put all my uh, secret, <laughs> all my all the special sauce stuff goes on this page, geeksontour.com. And you have to actually type it in. There's no menu item for that, in, including uh, I'm starting to put together some actual courses. And there's listed there. Learn to googlephotos.com is a blog that I write in often. Okay. Let's see if there's any more questions there that we missed. Uh, la, la. Can I save more? Can I save the same photo in more than one album? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So I have, I have just an album of RV pictures, and you bet that most of all of those pictures are also in one of my monthly albums. Right. Right. So Michael says, if I so if I have an album of receipts, I cannot search those receipts by date in an album that was shared with me. I don't not not the way I understand your question. No. Okay. So now search adds words in the response. In the words in the response. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, you mean it, it searches by words that are in the... So if the word December was on a sign that was in the picture, that would show up along with the All sign. right. And as photos have issues with album names using spaces, underscore, and dashes... Does it have underscore problem with those? My, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, I use dashes. I use spaces... Yeah. You know, it's it's if you want to make sure you're finding your stuff and not the fewer spaces the better. Yeah. But it doesn't okay. have a problem with it. All right. Money, is there a difference between Google Photos and OneDrive picture quality? Well, picture <laughs> um good question. To get the 100% free unlimited storage with Google Photos, you do have to accept what's called high quality, which means Google Photos compresses it and brings it down to 16 megapixels. Now, most phones don't go over 16 megapixels, so that doesn't matter. OneDrive stores your original because mm -hmm. you're, you're paying for, I'm talking about paying for OneDrive, whereas Google Photos is free. Yeah, so, but that's really nice. If for some reason I need my original, I have it because that's what OneDrive gets. Right. And you also still have it on your computer. And, you know, so in most cases. On your computer? If you've downloaded it and put it in 
Anyway. <laughs> I'm talking about smartphone photos. Smartphone photos. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you so much for that super chat. And thanks, Michael, for reminding you to do that. Oh, another reminder. I want you to remember to uh, subscribe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on that little bell to get notified. And, and also, if you're liking this thing, click on that thumbs up down there. I think that would really be cool. All right. I'm going to go straight to review questions. <laughs> yeah, let's get over there and see what we got. Oh, no. Some automatic commercials here. Mrs. Geek's Guide to Google Photos is available on Kindle and on Amazon. Our app of the week, I think we'll do that next week because we're going long. Questions, backstage pass, remind everybody that uh, at least our our premium members uh, that they can join us after after this and uh, we'll have a little discussion and should be good become a member at geeksontour.com let's see our website and if you already are thank you very much that's how we make our living we really appreciate our premium members and uh, thank you so much well did you learn something <clears throat> Nah. If you open the camera app on your phone and tap the miniature photo to view your pictures, what app is being used for the viewing? Google Photos, the built-in photos or gallery app for your phone, or whatever app you choose in settings? Unfortunately, it's B. <laughs> I wish there was a setting. There used to be on the Android and not anymore. Why do we recommend Second Cloud Storage Service to automatically upload your photos? A, others are better than Google. B, nah. <laughs> true backup. Or C, because Microsoft, uh, we own Microsoft stock, right? <laughs> <laughs> we want them to do well. It's B for a true backup. All right. It's Google Photos' job to upload all your photos to the cloud. It's your job to what? to check and see that it did actually get done. Most phones come with a native photo gallery app that is not Google Photos. What should you do with it after starting to use Google Photos? A, uninstall it, B, ignore it, C, hide it, or D, move it? You cannot uninstall it. If it came built in with the phone, you cannot uninstall it. So just ignore it, and it's easier to do if you hide it or move it to the last screen. <laughs> Great. And if you take a lot of similar photos, you need to A, keep the rest, keep the best, delete the rest, B, keep them all, and put them in best in albums. B, A means work. Deciding which photos to delete? No, that's like Sophie's choice. You know? <laughs> so I just keep them all, but I can pick the best one and put it in an album. And that's what you share with friends and family. So true or false, only professional photographers need to make the effort to edit or improve their pictures. False, false, false. Just a couple of taps. It's fun and your pictures look so much better. All right. So, Chris, what's the web page that lists all of our weekly shows? Geeksontour.com. The menu item is Weekly Class. And the web page that lists all of our recent newsletters? Geeksontour.com. And the menu item is Blogs and News. Newsletters are under there. And why do people pay $58 a year to join Geeks on Tour? Our member benefits include being able to ask us any question on our Q&A page. Uh, we have hundreds of tutorial videos like the two you saw today, learning guides and seven ebooks and courses to get written notes of these What Does This Button Do show. And some people join just to say thank you for all the free stuff we give. Yeah, and we really appreciate our, our folks. Next time, live show next week? Uh, I think we're going to be on the road next week. There's so, a good chance. No, so we're, no we're not going to do it, whether we whether we're here or not. <laughs> well, that's it for this week. Thank you all for being here, and we appreciate each and every one of you. I'm Jim. I'm Chris. And we are Geeks, Geeks on, on tour. tour. And what does this button do? Keep pushing those buttons. Don't touch that button. Just don't touch the button that turns the sound off, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Keep your hands off that I'll button. I'll try to. <laughs> all right. See you next time.
We'll be in the back.